Well, that was a thing. Oh, and we're back. Alright. Even should our alliance send a contingent to Eorzea, I will stay here in Doma with the remainder of our forces. As much as I would enjoy taking Imperial heads at your side, we can't leave our borders undefended. Which is, you know, fair enough. What uncanny timing that Master Alfino should be returned to us just as we were testing the barrier. I only hope a cure can be found for his malady. Otherwise, the War Council has ended in unanimous agreement. To forestall the Empire's expansion plans in this region, our allies are willing to send troops to fight in Eorzea. Well, that's handy, because that's why we're here. What's the good word? Alphino is safely ensconced in my private chamber. My finest healer is examining him as we speak. And I forgot to turn off the auto. I've spoken with the physician, and there's no outward signs of illness. Alphino is lost in a sleep from which he can't be awoken, just like the others. It seems that even the lands of the Empire were not far enough away to escape that cursed voice. I share your frustration, Alice. I do. But Alphino is returned to us alive and otherwise unharmed. All that remains is to find the means to wake him. Until then, you can but fulfill your duties as a scion. Yours and your brother's both. Ah, oh, you're right, of course. There are arrangements to be made and little time to make them. To business then, my lord. Now that we know Serio's wall works as intended, can we expect reinforcements for Alamigo? You most certainly can! As promised, we will send troops to bolster our allies in Eorzea without delay. Please be aware, however, that they will not arrive without delay. Save for some few who boast teleportation magics, the bulk of our forces must be transported by sea, a lengthy voyage for which the smaller vessels favored by the Confederacy are ill-equipped. Could you not use bigger vessels? I suppose the Feder the uh, the Confederacy have the best ships, so Accordingly I mean to enlist the assistance of the East Aldenard Trading Company in finding suitable ships. As for the navigate as for navigating the distance in question, we are in the happy position of being able to call upon those who plotted the course of my people's exodus to Eorzea. Hmm. Beyond the procurement of ships, I think it's unlikely that our East Alvinard friends will consent to any involvement in military operations, but I am certain they will afford Alfino a berth aboard one of their vessels. I shall have a chirurgeon accompany him every arm of the way to the Rising Stones. Bum. You have my thanks, Lord Hien. Yugiri. I'll go on ahead with our friends to Alamigo, enlist all those capable of teleportation, and put them at the disposal of the Oyozin Alliance as soon as possible. They will form the Vanguard. Yes, my lord. This is exactly what we'd hoped for. Listen, the Alliance leaders will be glad indeed to welcome the co combined strength of the East. I'm sure they will. For the force that's coming, yeah. Oh, why'd it do that? Meanwhile, at the Black Rose Chemical Plant. Oh, God. Our supplies of Black Rose have been ruined, but the new plant is already under construction. We should have the first batch ready in time for the offensive, Your Radiance. See that you do. Ah, 
Yes, the infamous Black Crows. If I recall correctly, Gaius did not much care for the invention. A ruthless and indiscriminate weapon indeed, this airborne poison. It seems you are capable of making decisions worthy of your bloodline. With no gift for sorcery, we Garlians must look to Magitek to even the odds. If it spares the needless deaths of our soldiers and serves the cause of this empire, there is no method I would not employ. How very noble of you. Truly, though, I must commend you for embracing your role as Emperor. You play the part of the determined ruler well. Sometimes even I catch myself believing. A silent agent of death. Now that I think on it, Black Rose may well possess the perfect aspect. Slowly but surely, the deluge of light has worked upon the ether here in the source, and the gas should be most susceptible to its influence. Well, I shall leave you to your own devices. Go forth and bloody the land with your grand and glorious war. While you do what, precisely? Need you ask? I will be doing what all Asians do. I am well aware that your kind exists only to usher in the next calamity. But you seem oblivious to the harm your singular agenda causes to the Empire. You cannot have forgotten the events which followed your mortal demise. Our homeland was plunged into civil war for your failure to name a successor. The edifice you so carefully constructed was but a hair's breadth from collapse. Are you truly so naive? You thought me oblivious to the consequences of a departure so painstakingly timed? It was by design? Well, of course it was. Though I will admit the resulting panic exceeded even my wildest expectations. But how can you be surprised? Throwing the world into disarray was the very purpose for which this nation was, as you say, so carefully constructed. Now, if you have no further questions, I must be on my way. Since we may not meet again in this lifetime, it would be remiss of me not to offer a word or two of gratitude. I really must thank you for this surplus of vessels. I can mold any host into my own image, but having bodies tailor-made for me in this fashion is so much less tiresome. You dabbled in elegant cloning techniques, yes? It certainly is a compelling, not to mention entertaining, field of research. And of all the options available, you chose the Founding Father on whom to experiment. You have a twisted streak to you, Varus. Like grandsire, like grandson, hey? If events play out as planned, this will become something of a family enterprise. 
will be the capstone of this world. I, the anchor and shard, and together we will give the lie to this star's fraudulent existence. Oh, it's going to be so annoying when he's like a good guy or something like that. I can see it coming. Though he did mention that he's going to be involved in the shard. Hmm. Ba 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 ba. Come, let's return to Lise and share the good news about our Far Eastern reinforcements. Go on ahead, Alexander. I will join you in Alamigo with our advance party as soon as I can. While you and my lord here and are aw away crossing swords with the Empire in distant Alamigo, I shall be here with the remainder of our forces, watching our borders. Pray send the Garleans my regards. <coughs> that one always hurts my throat. Parley on the front lines. He understands ready to depart for Alamigo. Ooh, some tea, some salmon muffins, which sounds disgusting, but could be nice. Some shaka taka clacker and, and gill. Uh. Anywho, he understands ready to depart for Alamigo. We must leave now to convene with the Orzia's leaders, and it may take some time before I return to Doma. Or it may be some time. Hakuro, I leave you in command. My lord. I shall, as I shall assemble an advance party with all haste and join you in Alamigo forthwith. I have just received word from Lise. The Alliance has established a base camp near Alamigo's northeastern border. Once we've arrived in the locks, we're to report to a resistance officer stationed in Porto Pretoria who will point us in, in the right direction. Let us not keep them waiting. Alright. Babada, babada. Is that different? Ah, Sirius' wall is a formidable barrier, but we can't afford to lower our guard even for a moment. Only constant vigilance will keep Dova safe from her enemies. Uh, let's wait. Wasn't it in the northeast, which is close to here? I'm sure they said northeast. Oh wait, no, they said. Oh my God, you were. They said they literally said Port of Pretoria. Ignore that, that never happened. Zoop, 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 zoop. Ba, 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 ba. Alright, who are we talking to? You apparently. Here we are again, ready to fight for the same foe. Yet I would not be anywhere else. This conflict concerns us all. Come what may, we cannot allow the Empire to regain its grip on Alamigo. Here, I think we found the guy at least mentioned. Oh, you must be the sign port you're totally looking out for. If you follow me, I'll take you directly to Alliance headquarters. You sure? Ooh. Welcome back, you two. Greetings, Lord Hugh. Glad you could join us. Glad to be here. 
I would have come sooner, were our own defense is not in question, but I am pleased to report that our soldiers are assembling for deployment to Alamigo as we speak. We're grateful for your support. Thanks to the efforts of our allies, it won't be long before we've established defensive positions on this front as well. <clears throat> we have some good news too. Elfano has come back to us. As for the bad news... Exposition! So, Alphano won't wake up, Gaius van Baelsar is alive and hunting Asians, and the Empire is planning to poison us all with toxic gas. Does that sound about right? More or less. Ordinarily, any one of those things would have left me in shock. But the way things have been lately, it's all starting to seem pretty normal. Getting back to your report, are we sure this Black Rose is the weapon Maxima was talking about? It fits the description. And it seems we have Alfino to thank for sparing us an early demonstration of its effectiveness. I have a feeling this won't be the last time his bravery in the Empire will serve us here in Eorzea. The threat of an unknown weapon has had us all on edge. But now that we know what we're dealing with, we can take steps to defend against it. As for Gaius... I'm not sure what to think. Am I happy he's alive? Not in the slightest. Am I happy he's hunting Asians? Aye, I'd have to say I am. Oh, speaking of Garlians you didn't expect to see, we have a tale of our own, as it happens. When we sent envoys to the Imperial Army to request talks, they returned with the message that Barisos Galvus would be attending. The Emperor himself. Well, Varus did sanction the Popularis peace mission. But knowing that an Asian walks in his son's skin, I do not see how we can trust him or anyone from that nest of vipers. The Alliance would proceed with negotiations regardless, if only to give ourselves more time to prepare. We do, however, require your cooperation. Ah, right. Yes. So, as a condition for the talks to go forward, the Empire has requested that a member of the Scions be present. There'll be a representative from each Alliance nation, of course, but I'm afraid we have to ask that you come along too. God, Lise! You know how much I hate politics! But then, what choice do I have? Alphano and the others aren't going to do it. Very well. I shall attend as the Scion's representative. In case you're wondering why I didn't ask you, the Empire also requested the presence of Eorzea's champion. I'll be there. I'm not fun of politics. Yeah, I'll be there. That's settled then. We don't know what Varus means to bring to the table, or why he wants you there, but having you close at hand will make all the difference. The meeting will take place on the border. Anticipating an early assault, we mean to position the bulk of our forces nearby. The Alliance leaders should already be on their way. Once you're ready, we can head out and join them. Okay. Ah! It's, it's an actual place! Well, this I did not expect. There's the exit out of here. 
on a mod with a crate. It's like quite detailed as well. I'll do whatever it takes to save my patients. Whatever it takes. Anyone else? Ooh. Here's nothing more beautiful than sunset in the Rotano. I'll pray I live to see it. Do, 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 do. I fear we lack the numbers to hold out. Then we must call for reinforcements. We have no reason to believe the barrier will not hold. Yet if they should pull up a bear against us. Nathan? No? Just a status report? Alright, fair enough. Yep, yeah, nothing. Wait. There's another no exit. But it leads to the other no exit. Why is this a thing? I mean, obviously, it's to hide the door that's over there. But, whatever. Anything else? Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 da, da, do, do. We must protect the borders at all costs. Till all die and breaths. Any more for any more? Any more for any more? Ba, 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 ba. If Charlian could not negotiate peace with the Empire, I rather doubt war can be avoided here. But every moment we steal for our preparations will count in the final reckoning. If Emperor Varus is, is... Is Emperor Varus in thought the Eshians? That is the question. Should the Empire decide to ignore the rules of parlay, we could be fighting far sooner than we'd like. Keep your weapons close. I never get his voice quite right. Alright, Lise. Well, I don't suppose it's polite to keep an Emperor waiting too long, shall we? Parley with the Emperor. Do, 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 do. Esteemed representatives of the Eorzean Alliance. On behalf of the Galian Empire, I thank you for inviting me here today. As this parley was convened at your request, I invite you to speak first. Very well, your radiance. I, Nanimo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of Ul, should be pleased to oblige you. As recent events in Alamigo and Doma have made plain, the subjugation and exploitation of neighboring nations is not a sustainable policy. Should this day end in war, you may very well defeat us, but you will never extinguish the people's desire for freedom. Though it may not be in our lifetime, there will be another revolution, another war, and the cycle will continue. Doma has entered into a concord with the nations of Eorzea, a partnership wherein we recognize one another as equals. Garlemald could be afforded similar treatment. You need only set aside your ambitions and join us in paving a path towards peace. <laughs> 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 
You will not win me over with sophistry, your grace. As you know only too well, this alliance lacks the strength to keep the peace within its own borders. Even now, your struggles with the Beastmen continue unabated. Divided, you sow this fertile soil with the seeds of your differences and reap naught but discord and chaos for your trouble. Eorzea must be united under one leader, one purpose. I would offer you both and bring an end to your strife. With all due respect, your radiance, the only thing that you offered the people of Alamigo was fear and hopelessness. The citizens of Dorma can also attest to the meager arms of Imperial rule. There is no purpose to be found in a life of oppression, each day more uncertain than the last. Our people are willing to die for their freedom. A great many already have, and countless more will, if we don't put an end to this madness here and now. We brought order and stability to your lives. This madness and bloodshed is of your own making. You broke the peace, not Garlemald. Peace? Order? You kill our peoples, despoil our lands, take everything that is ours. And what? You expect us to lick the boot that grinds our faces into the dirt? I expect you to weigh the costs. To recognize that countless lives have been lost on both sides in pursuit of a greater good, and to not squander all we have achieved in a fit of petulance. Your Radiance. I fear I can personally attest to the dangers of pursuing one's vision with such righteous fervor. For a thousand years, the Holy See of Ishgard waged war with dragons. A thousand years of sacrifice, of sorrow and hate, in which we bathed in the blood of friend and foe alike. Had it gone on any longer, we may well have drowned. Yet we have chosen to raise ourselves out of this bloody spiral and have since made peace with our former enemy. So I understand. No doubt the dragons were more receptive to your overtures in the wake of their leader's demise. You speak of peace, yet use war to achieve it. Your father would not have bothered to obscure his intent with honeyed words. He understood that strength is all that matters in the end. I mean, technically the peace talks happened before the death of Nidhogg, unless you don't count the Shade as his actual death. Without his clarity of vision, I can but wonder what will become of Ishgard and her people. There was a time when Garlemald too lacked a leader of conviction. Weak and unable to wield magic, we were at the mercy of the strong from whom we sought refuge in the bitter cold of the north. Were it not for the discovery of Ceruleum and the subsequent development of Magitech, we might never have gained the power to take back that which was rightfully ours. You speak as if your people were the first to have been driven from their homes. Limsa Laminsa was built by wayward souls in search of a place to call their own. On the shores of Vilbrand we found it, and from those humble beginnings did we grow and flourish. 
and all without robbing our neighbours of their liberty. So saith the pirate. Am I to believe that you simply asked the kobolds to yield up their lands and that they were happy to oblige you? That you did not drive them out like rats in the hold of one of the many ships seized by your privateers? I will concede that after centuries of exile, reclamation may be mistaken for invasion. Nevertheless, it is not. And those who till stolen soil have no right to object when cast out in turn. Your uncompromising nature rivals that of the Ixil. They, too, lament circumstances which they themselves perpetuate. Were they but to embrace peace, we would welcome them with open arms. Indeed, some few have done just that, and now receive of the Twelve's Woods bounty. Would that your people might learn from their example. <laughs> <laughs> you dare compare us to the Birdmen? You who thought to invoke the Twelve and threaten all of creation? I came here in the hope of finding some speck of common ground, but I see now these discussions will accomplish nothing. Despite what you people may believe, I am not one to choose the sword over the olive branch. Tis but a pity men are loath to accept one without first being shown the other. Wait! I beg you. This meeting was supposed to be a chance to find a way forward together, not to bemoan the missteps which brought us here. Please, if you truly consider violence a last resort, there must be a way we can come to an agreement. As Mistress Alizé says, we did not come here to bicker over the past, but to discuss how we might strive towards a brighter future. Emperor Varys, may I suggest a short recess, that all present might compose themselves prior to beginning anew? Very well. I pray this intermission will suffice to move these talks in a more constructive direction. It's time for a break, then. <laughs>